Dave Whitlock, legend in the fly fishing community. This is one of his patterns, the Near Nuff Sculpin. It's an awesome fly. Definitely worth having in your box. Check it out. Fly, fish, food, 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 food. Okay, this fly has been around for I don't even know how long, but it's a, it's a legendary little streamer. Uh, more and more with our streamer fishing, we're going smaller in size with, with heavy weight. And this, this streamer checks all those boxes. So we'll just show you how to do it. Um, first things first that you'll notice is we're using the TMCO 708 hook. This is a 40 degree jig hook. It's going to really help this fly ride hook point up. And uh, I really like the, the, the long hook point on this one. I fished this one quite a bit um, all of last year and caught a ton of fish on this hook. So that's one modification that I've made. Everything else is pretty by the book. So what I'm going to do is in order to attach those uh, barbell eyes, I'm going to build up some thread right here on this bend. And I'll take the eyes. And, and the, another thing when you're selecting eyes um, select the eyes based on how fast you want this fly to sink. You could do a size 6 with small, medium, or large eyes. You could use even a, a size 8 or 10 as well with the same eyes. So the eyes don't necessarily have to match the overall hook. It's just based on how, how quickly you want this to sink. So with that in mind, I'm just going to lay my eyes on the hook, um, parallel to the hook, and then once I have a few wraps around, I'll just let go and they kind of kick off to one side. I'll do three or four turns of thread and then start figure eighting with three or four turns of thread the other way. And once I get it to about to this point, I can come in here and adjust where I want the, the eye to sit exactly. So that's where I want it. Now I'll just start building up some thread, a bunch of wraps one way, a bunch of wraps the other way, and the eyes will just kind of turn with wherever, whichever direction you're torquing your thread. So it kind of starts looking like that. From here, I'm going to wrap around each side of the eye to build up more thread. And then I'm going to wrap around the base of those. So that's pretty well locked in. However, if I don't glue this down, it will probably still rotate. And I don't want to sit here and use half a spool of thread just filling that up. So what I'm going to do is come in here with some super glue and dab those eyes in place. And we're good to go. All right. So you can add some lead wraps on this if you want it heavier. There's a lot you can do to make this fly heavier. But I just like to adjust the size of eyes. Now, you can use any feathers you want for this as long as they're kind of rounded and webby. So this is a, a whiting bugger patch. You can use a whiting hen sackle or, or hen, <laughs> hen saddle, hen sackle. You don't, hens don't have the sackle, that's the roosters. So don't use the hen sackle, use the hen saddle. So anyway, you want feathers that roughly look like this. Uh, so if you have any pelts out there that have that general shape, they will do the trick. All right, so I'm going to take two of those feathers that I farmed off of that saddle, and I'm going to place them so that they're facing each other and line them up so the tips are, are aligned. So as you can see, each side I've got, you know, got it pretty well lined up. And I want that to be, I don't know, roughly shank length. So when I get it where I want it, I'm just going to peel off some fibers and then come in here and trim it. Now, you can see how those hackle stems want to cross over. Um, and if you tie them in that way, um, your, your feathers will want to cross. So on my tie-in point, if I hit those feathers right where the feather starts right here and just start wrapping those with touching turns going forward it will align those stems and it will uncross them as you go forward and when you when you lay them out your feathers are going to look just like that so 
that's that's pretty dialed um, as far as how I want those feathers to sit on the fly. Um, from here, I'm not going to use a reverse palmer on this because these hen hackle stems are pretty gnarly. Uh, they're they're pretty durable. I'm not worried about them breaking as much as I would say a rooster. So I'm just going to take the tip of that of the third feather that I farmed off of my sackle and tie that in as well. It doesn't have to be pretty because you're going to cover that all up. Now this the rest of the fly kind of follows a bugger uh, type pre or uh, tying instruction but instead of chenille we're going to use um, some dubbing and this is Dave Whitlock's blend the SLF and this color is called near enough sculpin olive so we're going to build the body out of that you could use uh, semi seal for this you could use uh, a wide array of different buggy dubbings for this so it's a pretty thick dubbing rope and I'll just start wrapping that forward building up a little bit of bulk along the way a little bit more now I dissected a few of these flies uh, just to kind of get the the overall idea how to tie them and there's a little band of black dubbing about right here um, that is in all these flies just give a little bit of a black throat profile I'm sure that it shows up once the fly gets wet and moving around and then uh, once you have that you go back to your Sculpt an olive and wrap up right up next to those eyes. Dub those down tight. All right. So that's the body. Um, we're going to add some flash. So this fly has some flash that runs along the body and it extends out. Um, along the side of the tails as well. So what I'm going to do is just take some crystal flash. This is olive crystal flash And I'll tie it in about the halfway point Right behind behind the eyes. So half the crystal flash is Going forward half of it's going back then I'm going to wrap that around the eye And tie it in on the other side. So essentially you've got two clumps of flash coming on either side of the fly now this is the part of the fly that gave me the most trouble. Um, so we'll see if I can not screw it up. What I'm going to do is I'll start by taking this body hackle and start with like a half a turn and I'm going to pull that the, the flash down on either side and get it to sit exactly where I want it so that as I go forward with this hackle kind of pulls it along and secures it down so pretty heavily hackled here you want to end up with a little bit of the the webby schlopping at the end of the fly and then trim that off grab your flash now and trim it roughly the same length as the tails oh, my tails got all screwy that's fine just fixed them Okay, from here, um, this is just kind of my own flare. This is how I would finish this fly as far as building a, a head. Uh, you can just dub some dub onto your thread and figure it between the eyes, but I like to do a dubbing loop. So I'm going to build a loop and close it off and then uh, build it with the same stuff we used in the body. Brigham? Did you steal my dubbing loop twister? Goodness gracious. Where was it? Where was it? You made me put it with all my other stuff. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna grab just a little dubbing twister like this, and I'm going to build up a dubbing loop 
as you can see I've cut the corner off of the bag so that when I grab these fibers out of the corner of the bag they all kind of line up the way I want to tie them into this head and these heads always use a little bit more dubbing than you think they're going to need so about like that use the old CNF top twister to get it turned alright now once it's twisted up I'm going to lightly pick out some of those uh, fibers before I wrap it and I'll do one to two full turns behind the barbell eyes then I'm going to cross over and under that eye and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side go around the eye and then I'm going to finish in front oh, my thread decided to go behind the eye I'm going to go in front of the eye with a couple turns and then I should just be able to tie that off and you got to be careful your your thread will slide right off the, the front of the eye and unravel everything that's why I keep this finger here to hold my thread out of the way as I trim it off all right now that I have tension back on my thread I'll just hurry and whip finish and then take a little bit of velcro and pick out that head so brush the head down into the hackle into the body and you've got a super sweet little sculpin pattern that has caught I don't know how many thousands of fish over the years